Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk all things hand eczema. Itchy red raised rashes on the hands maybe come and go. It's a really common issue. There are a few subtypes. We're gonna talk all things hand dermatitis today, but before getting into it, give this video a thumbs up. If you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist, be sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on so that you don't miss out on any of this top notch skincare content. Hand eczema, it's actually an umbrella term for a few different types of skin conditions, but it's really common. For whatever reason, it's very common in young adult women. Roughly 10 to 15% of the general population deals with a chronic hand dermatitis. Like I said, there are a few different types of hand dermatitis and you can have overlaps of different types of hand dermatitis because having one type of hand dermatitis just kind of makes you more likely to get some of the others. Probably one of the more common types is known as irritant hand dermatitis. Basically things that come in contact with the skin, irritate the skin barrier and lead to more water loss out of the skin and irritation. Anything can be an irritant to the skin, including water, which actually is a pretty common trigger for irritant hand dermatitis. Water on the skin, not only is it an irritant, but it kind of opens the skin up for other irritating things getting in, which makes you then at greater risk for the second type of hand dermatitis, which is allergic contact dermatitis. Not as common, but definitely can occur. And if you deal with irritant hand dermatitis long enough, eventually you can develop an allergy to one of the ingredients that comes in contact with your impaired hand skin barrier. Common allergens for the hands include nickel, hand dermatitis. It really can largely be influenced by your occupation, especially hairdressers, because they're working with their hands in shampoos, different mixing up dyes and whatnot. They're working with their hands all day long. We're in and out of gloves. It can be irritating, make their hands sweat, friction, all those things. Put hairdressers at an increased risk for hand dermatitis. Chefs, food handlers, caterers, people who chop up vegetables, they definitely are at an increased risk for hand dermatitis because foods, they can be irritating to the skin, especially garlic, onions, certain fruits like citrus fruits. Florists, especially to tulips and aloe Stomeria. People who work in housekeeping, janitorial services, definitely an at-risk group. They're coming in contact with detergents, cleaning products are notorious for being rough on the hands. Plus they're in and out of gloves all the time can end up causing a lot of irritation for the hands. And let's not forget healthcare workers. They definitely are at an increased risk because A, they're washing their hands all the time and they also are exposed to a lot of things that they touch that are irritating to the skin. People who work in printing and certain types of engineering all at increased risk for coming in contact with irritating, noxious stuff. Then the last but not least, but it's pretty common, is something called dyshydrotic hand eczema or pomphalox. And it's not pleasant, super itchy. It starts out as these little water bumps, water blisters. They almost look like little tapioca beads on the sides of the fingers, the palms. This can also affect your feet as well. It's often triggered by sweat, humidity. Nickel is a frequent trigger. Contact with you know detergents, things that disrupt the skin barrier. Much more common in people with atopic dermatitis. As a side note, if you are dealing with a hand eczema, ask your parents if it, or you know whoever raised you. Hey, did I have eczema as a kid? You know, a lot of people have atopic dermatitis in child early childhood. They kind of outgrow it and it'll rear its head later on in your adult life as maybe a really miserable hand rash. And the thing about pomphalox, it's kind of a weird name, or dyshydrosis, is that those little uh, firm tapioca bead vesicles, they're called vesicles, they erupt clear fluid and they start to weep. And that fluid in and of itself is kind of itchy. All right, so what can you do? All right, everybody's got to wash their hands, right? I mean, you, you know, you can't avoid hand washing. When it comes to hand washing for the purposes of hand hygiene, it's more about the amount of time that you spend rubbing the skin together and you know, getting all surfaces. So you don't need a really harsh antibacterial hand soap. Choose a mild cleanser. Even a creamy face wash can actually serve as a hand wash. It's still gonna achieve the same thing of removing bacteria, dirt, debris, but it's not as harsh on the, on the skin barrier. Once you rinse, you wanna towel dry your hands and then put on an emollient. Ideally, 
an ointment like just plain petrolatum because the nice thing about plain petrolatum is that if you are allergic to something that you're coming in contact with, petrolatum is not gonna aggravate things. Whereas if you choose something else, like a, even aquaphor has more ingredients in it, you may actually be allergic to, to something in that and that could worsen it. So I always suggest plain petrolatum, but truthfully, when you're in the middle of a work day, it can be very cumbersome and just not practical to be lubing up your hands all the time with Vaseline uh, because it come, becomes very difficult to, to keep, keep going on. Instead, you know, you choose a cream or a lotion at least just to keep the skin hydrated and to reduce water loss. And the benefit of using an emollient is that it reduces penetration of irritants and potential allergens into that compromised skin. As soon as you rinse cleanser off, you know, as soon as you, from washing your hands, you're gonna compromise the skin barrier. And, and that you know, can be a problem for, for those of you with hand dermatitis. Now, when it comes to drying your hands, make sure actually that you dry very thoroughly between the fingers. This is actually probably a very common inciting factor when it comes to flares of hand dermatitis. The finger webs, they collect little droplets of water and soap residue from washing your hands. And people are not always as good at thoroughly rinsing and thoroughly drying those areas. They collect a little bit of fluid, even just a tiny little you know, micro droplets of, of excess moisture there. And it's an area where you have skin on skin contact in the finger folds, basically, the web spaces. And that can be very irritating. This is a common area where hand dermatitis will arise from, is the between the fingers. It, it, it gets moist there, the skin breaks down. It's also predisposed to being colonized with candida yeast, and it, that can be really uncomfortable. Make sure you're rinsing off all of the cleanser residue thoroughly from between the fingers and that you're completely drying them. So use a towel a soft towel to do that. Make sure you're getting the finger spaces. Don't wash your hands while you are wearing rings. And because what happens is some of the water plus the soap residue is going to get trapped up under the ring. And then you're going to not be able, to, it's not gonna rinse out when you rinse your hands and it's not gonna dry when you dry your hands. You're gonna have moisture and you're gonna have soap residue trapped up under that ring and it's gonna rub back and forth and break down the skin under that ring. That is a trigger point for hand dermatitis then erupting elsewhere. Likewise, when you do chores, prepare food, don't wear rings. Dust, uh, cleaning product residue, food particulates, uh, flour even, gets trapped up under there, under that ring, and it gets rubbed into the skin, breaks the skin down, hand dermatitis kicks off. Honestly, if you're dealing with a hand dermatitis, just stop wearing rings for a while because they, I, I love jewelry, but for me personally, I do have to just put it to the side if I, if I have a flare up of the hand eczema because you don't want stuff getting trapped up under there. It's just gonna make things worse for you. Yeah, I see people as a side note cooking or you know maybe preparing meatballs or something and they're wearing their rings. And I, you know, I know it doesn't bother people, but I, that definitely can, can trigger hand dermatitis because stuff is getting trapped up under there, for sure. Speaking of food and hands, if you have a tendency towards hand dermatitis especially, don't prepare citrus fruits or uh, garlic or onions with bare hands. Use gloves when you're chopping them because garlic especially, uh, as well as citrus fruits, they are actually pretty irritating to the skin, that prolonged contact. So wear food handlers gloves when you are preparing those. If you're somebody who cooks a lot at home, especially if you have a history of eczema, if you have a history of eczema, you have to just be a lot more militant about your hand care than somebody who doesn't because at baseline, if you have a history of eczema, you likely have a filaggrin deficiency and your skin barrier is just more prone to slacking off and letting this kind of stuff happen and go awry. So you have to be a lot more on top of things. Even if your eczema is not active, even if it's something you had as a child and it's gone, a thing of the past, stay on top of these things. You don't want to have a bout of hand dermatitis. It is a pain. Okay, uh, the other thing is, now, if you do dishes by hand, don't do dishes by hand without wearing gloves. Rubber gloves or plastic gloves with a cotton liner are best. And the reason is prolonged contact with water plus minus detergent is not friendly to anyone's hands, 
But if you've got a history of hand dermatitis, this is just like kicking you when you are down. Likewise, when you're doing household chores, don't go in barehanded. Stuff that's designed to get food residue out of your sink, uh, you know, break it up off of dishes or countertops, chemicals that you use to remove dust, wipe down, even if it's labeled as, you know, Mrs. Meyers, all natural, all of that stuff can be super irritating to the skin of the hands. So always wear gloves, but when it comes to wearing gloves, you actually have to be careful. Don't just wear them nonstop uninterrupted because what happens is you start sweating under the glove and that's sweat, if you remember back from my video, sweat is a skin irritant. So it ends up causing you problems because you've got sweat now trapped under the glove. So ideally, you're only wearing the gloves for 20 minutes at a time. So when you're doing dishes and stuff, I say use rubber gloves that have a cotton liner, softer on the skin, less friction, less irritation. But the other thing you have to be aware of is that allergy to components in rubber gloves can arise. Vinyl is actually much less likely to cause skin allergy for you to develop allergies to stuff. So if you if you're somebody who deals with a lot of hand dermatitis bouts and or you have eczema, you're already predisposed to hand dermatitis, you're predisposed to developing allergies to stuff, consider vinyl gloves instead of rubber. Allergies to those, they can happen. And your skin, you know, when it's raw, red, inflamed, the barrier is impaired, stuff just starts getting in there and your immune system is shooting left and right and stuff happens. So be, be militant. Uh, every 20 minutes, take the gloves off, let your hands air out a bit, take a break. I already mentioned this, but avoid direct contact with household cleaners. You know those wipes that you may use to disinfect things? Don't go in barehanded with those. You know, they have ingredients in them that are meant to break down cell walls of bacteria and stuff. So don't go in barehanded with those things. Can be really aggravating for your skin. I already kind of mentioned this earlier, but when you're dealing with hand dermatitis, just back off of the jewelry in general. Because not only the issue with the ring with the rings that we talked about earlier, but a lot of people have nickel allergy, a lot. I mean, you probably have nickel allergy and you don't even know it. And it can kind of vary in terms of intensity, but when you are in the midst of a hand dermatitis and that skin is there, raw, rashy, nickel is like tempting your immune system too much and it can really aggravate the hand dermatitis. It can be a trigger for dishydrotic hand eczema, but it's not just your, your jewelry you have to be mindful of. You also have to be aware of your clothing with metal adornments, uh, belt buckles, zippers, buttons, snaps can have metal. Speaking of jewelry, oftentimes the earring backs have nickel in them. And so you may have a pair of earrings that's like, you know, stainless steel or something, but the back can have nickel in it and that can be an aggravating factor. All right, so, you know, you probably wanna know like what, what can we do to just get rid of it? Aside from all of these behavioral things, the best thing to do, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, cause it's hard, if you are dealing with a stubborn hand dermatitis is to see a board certified dermatologist. And I know it's you know becoming increasingly difficult to do that these days, but it is the best thing for you because uh, first of all, if you've developed an allergy to something that you're coming in contact with, the dermatologist is gonna to have to do some sleuthing. They're gonna to have to do patch testing to figure out what the heck you're allergic to so that you can avoid it and move on with your life. Uh, so that is, that is key. Prescription medications may be needed. And the other thing that can happen when you have hand dermatitis and the skin barrier is impaired, guess what it's more amenable to? Little critters getting on there. You may actually have hand fungus. Uh, you've heard of ringworm. It can happen on your hands, it's called tinea monum. And that itches, it can ooze, it can weep. It's flaky, scaly, dry, raised. All of those things can happen with uh, ringworm on the hands, tinea monum. So when you see a derm, you know, they can scrape some of the flaky stuff onto a slide, look at it under the microscope, and they can see if there's fungus there. If there's fungus, they can give you antifungal medications, may clear things up, you can move on with your life. So see a board certified dermatologist, hand dermatitis, you know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of sleuthing that needs to go on before you can sometimes go on the right path. Petrolatum is fine to use, plain petrolatum. Uh, white cotton gloves, you know, at, at nighttime especially. 
put the petrolatum on to clean hands and then cover with a glove. By doing it under occlusion like that, it really helps to protect the skin. You can wear the gloves as you sleep if you want to, or just, you know, as long as you can tolerate. But petrolatum, that is your friend. And again, I suggest just sticking with plain petrolatum. You know, Vaseline is the common name brand sold here, but uh, wherever, wherever you live, petrolatum, ointment, just fine. You don't even have to use, it again, the name brand. You can use the generic brand. Whatever you do, do not, do not go put Neosporin on hand dermatitis. Why? Neosporin is useless for hand dermatitis. I mean, it's completely useless, aside from the fact that it does have petrolatum in it. So I guess it's not completely useless, but you have to be really careful. You know, Neosporin, it's got some antimicrobials in it that aren't, just frankly, are not that good at uh, eliminating things that can cause problems for you. But the real issue with Neosporin is that it is a common cause of allergic contact dermatitis. So you're more at risk for developing an allergy to Neosporin when you're in the midst of a hand dermatitis and then it's gonna worsen the hand dermatitis. And the thing about it is because it's in petrolatum, initially it's soothing, feels good, but because you've developed an allergy to the Neosporin ingredients, well, boom, it makes things worse for you. Let me know in the comments, so if your hand dermatitis is something that has been triggered or aggravated by your occupation, because uh, you know it, it really can be, be a problem for a lot of people uh, who work in fields where their hands are exposed to a lot of chemicals or uh, even just water, frequent hand washing, it really can be a, a major issue for people once they develop a hand dermatitis, very hard to actually do their job. So let me know if this has been an issue for you guys. Uh, but I hope this video was helpful for you all. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.